Welcome back everyone. We are almost done with this part. We just need to do what's called chamfering, which is breaking the edges around this part so that they're not sharp and they are nice and clean. So one thing that I neglected to mention to you is how to turn on and off these tool pads, right? So right now I've got all of my operations are selected and I can see all these tool pads and it's kind of distracting. So if I click Alt plus T, so Alt T, that's going to toggle those tool paths on and off, which is super handy. Now if I go up here to my only display selected tool paths, what that's going to do is allow me to only display each tool path. If I don't have that on, all of my tool paths won't show when I select them. So I like to have that on, and I can turn that on and off, and each time I select whichever tool paths, so just the main operations will select. So that's a super handy feature if you don't want to see the tool paths at all. So our final operation is going to be chamfer. There's two ways to go about doing a chamfer nowadays with Mastercam 2021 out. I think they added this feature in 2020, but I'm not positive. You can do a normal contour with some changes, or you can do what's called model chamfer. I find that model chamfer works sometimes, and lately it adds some weird motion that doesn't make sense, so I only use that occasionally. The classic way to do a chamfer is with straight up contour. So let's go ahead and create a contour toolpath. And with our chaining, we're going to chain the outside here as well as the inside of this pocket. And we want to chamfer this, so let's go to loop here and we'll choose the top loop. Now, if you choose this loop, oops, that's not what you want. You can just unselect that. So you want to select that loop there. And again, we want to make sure our tool path is going correctly, so clockwise on the outside. And we'll choose this inside loop here. And we're going clockwise on the inside, which we want to switch. So with the reverse key here, let's reverse that chain. And we'll click that OK. Back into our parameters screen here. We're going to want to choose a tool, and you guessed it. Chamfering uses a chamfer mill. A chamfer mill is like a spot drill, but it has a flat bottom. And those are right here. And we'll choose a half inch chamfer mill. Comment here, chamfer the part. Now, to do a chamfer with a normal contour, you go into your cut parameters screen here, and you'll choose the contour type from 2D, you want a 2D chamfer. So with our chamfer width, 0.1 is a pretty beefy chamfer. So we don't really want that big of a chamfer. We just want to clean up that edge so that it's not sharp and it looks nice. So a good baseline here is 0.02 inches. Now the bottom offset is how far beyond the bottom of that that bottom edge is the tip going to extend. And you want a little bit of a value there so that the flat bottom here doesn't leave a lip or a burr on the edge. So leaving it at point 0.1 is fine. So you just want to make sure you change your contour type and your chamfer width. Depth cuts, no. Lead in, lead out is fine as it was with the regular contour. And then finally, our linking parameters. So one thing to make certain when you are chamfering is that you want your depth to always be zero. If you add, sorry, if you go negative on that value there, if you go negative 0.1, sorry, negative 0.1, that's going to add negative 0.1 to this width here. So your actual chamfer is going to come out 0.12. 
So you always want to leave that as zero. The depth and width of the chamfer is defined by this field right here. So we'll OK out. And we'll toggle on our toolpath, because apparently it is not toggled on with Alt-T. There we go. And we can see our chamfer toolpath. So it looks really deep, but that's because it has that bottom offset. So we'll back plot and take a look here, and I'll pause it so I can take a look at what it's doing. And you can see again that big bottom offset there. So it's not actually cutting super deep on the profile. So that looks good. And to verify what everything looks like on this part, let's go to our machine group and select everything and run it through our verify simulation. All right, so we are done with the first operation of this part. Let's go ahead and move on so we can finish up this part and be done.